OK, troops, today it's higher physics, the particles and waves unit, and it's irradiance. Irradiance is the total energy per second. That's the same as power that falls on a surface area of one square metre. There's a relationship on your relationship sheet for that. It's irradiance is power over area, watts per square metre. And later on in the course, you might also meet irradiance as the number of photons that fall per second per square metre as well. But for the moment, irradiance, power per square metre. Now, if we think about a point source of light, that's a source of light that emits its light energy in all directions from a small central point. Now, for example, our sun is an example of a point source, and so is a small torch bulb. Then the energy per second that's given out is spread over the surface area of a sphere. Surface area of a sphere is 4 pi r squared. That's one of the additional maths relationships at the back of your relationship sheet. And as the light travels further from that point source, that light spreads into an ever-increasing sphere of light. So what that means is that the further away you go from that point source, the irradiance, that's the power per square metre, decreases. Another way of thinking about this is if you double the distance that you are from the point source, the surface area is four times greater. So the irradiance decreases by four times. And this is an example of a relationship in physics called the inverse square law. Irradiance varies with 1 over d squared. So irradiance will be equal to some constant divided by d squared. Or you could rearrange that and say i1 d squared at one location will be equal to i times d squared at another location. I'm going to do a little experiment to see if we can verify that relationship. Here's the demo then. We're going to set up a small light bulb, which will be our point source, and we're going to measure the irradiance that we detect from it at various distances, 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8, and one metre away from it, which we'll measure with a metre stick. So here we go. OK, troops, here's today's exciting experiment. This time it's irradiance and distance where we're looking at the irradiance or the power per unit area given off by a light source, a point source in this case. And we're assuming this small torch bulb approximates to a point source that's giving out its light out in all directions. So I've mounted the bulb sideways and we're going to measure the irradiance using this light meter which measures in lux. We're just going to call it units of irradiance though and we're going to measure it at various distances from the bulb using this not very good meter stick. We could do with a new meter stick from Jim's Meter Stick Emporium but it will have to do for the moment and we'll measure the irradiance at various distances all the way along it. So we're going to start at the 20 centimeter mark and the reading on my light meter at that distance will be recorded on the irradiance meter. Same at 40 and 60 and so on. So we're set up, the bulb is turned on and I'm going to put my light detector at the first of those measurements which is the 20 centimetre mark and we're getting 57, about 57 units of irradiance. Next one, 15.5 at the 0 0.4 meter mark. At 0 0.6 meters, 7.8, 7.8. At 0 0.8 meters, we'll go for 5.3. And the last one at 103.5 at one meter. So here are my experimental results in a table here. First thing to notice if we want to establish the relationship between irradiance and distance from a point source of light, first thing to see is that as the distance increases, the irradiance decreases. And as we're dealing with a point source that radiates in all directions, then this may well be another instance of the inverse square law. So to verify that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do 1 over my distance measurements squared 
and another column. I have now got an extra column there, one over d squared. And it's nice to notice now that as the irradiance decreases, then one over d squared is also decreasing. I'm going to draw a graph of these two. But before we do that, I'm going to try something else as well. We're going to see what happens when we multiply the irradiance by the distance squared. So I've calculated i times d squared and hmm, I'm expecting a constant. Doesn't look really like a constant. There may well be some systematic uncertainty in this. So what we should really do is plot a graph. I'm going to plot a graph of the radiance on my y-axis and one over d squared on my x-axis. We'll see how that looks. That constant isn't really reliable enough for us to say that uh, i times d squared is a constant. So we'll see how we go on with the graph. So I've put all my results into a spreadsheet and I'm going to plot a graph of the irradiance on the y-axis, 1 over d squared on the x-axis. And we get a straight line with a positive gradient of 2.2, but it doesn't quite go through the origin. It's a linear relationship, but there's a y-intercept of about 1.6. And that points to our systematic uncertainty. All our irradiance measurement seems to be too high by about 1.6 units. And this is possibly due to the background light that was still in the room. If we were to subtract 1.6 from all of our irradiance measurements, then our graph would be a straight line that goes through the origin. So we have then verified that for a point source, irradiance varies directly with 1 over the distance squared, or irradiance times the distance squared is equal to a constant. That's it. See you in a bit.